Well, now for the time that you've been waiting for, um, we are going to uh, introduce Rich Weller here. Um, but before we do that, a little housekeeping. Uh, today's session is classified as technical and you do get one and a half PDUs. Feel free to go out and self-report. And Rich, I'm going to let you steal the show now. Hey, uh, thank you so much, Bob, and thank you, uh, PMI here on Valley Chapter, for again allowing me to come back, come back home, and you'll figure out what I mean here in just a moment, uh, to come back home and, and share share some things with you. Uh, just, uh, just to kind of manage uh, expectations, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen right now. Uh, let's make sure that we can see it okay. The topic for uh, tonight's presentation or today's presentation is portfolio management in modern times. Bob, are we getting good audio and video? Five by five. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, listen, uh, as we go through this, this is a, uh, this is a, uh, I, me I mentioned in the headline, this will be a little, this is going to be a, a bit interactive. So I've got a number of surveys. I'm going to try to survey you guys as we go throughout the, uh, throughout the session. Uh, the one thing I would like to ask if, uh, if you, if you have any questions, if you could just jot those down and I promise you, we'll save time at the end. I'll, I will, save time at the end and, and take your questions um but uh I'm, I'm expecting this uh this story to flow in about 40 or 45 or, or 50 minutes so uh uh and then finally the last bullet point here just to manage expectations we're not going to deep dive this stuff um, i'm going to show you some things at a high level um it's an awareness level and I'm also providing you uh, links on a number of slides uh, where you can go off and get more details on each uh, each item that we'll we'll be talking about. So let's let's move forward here. Let's uh, let's take a take a look at our our agenda that we're going to cover uh, in our time here together today. You know, they always say you got to know your audience before you uh, before you deliver a presentation. So the first thing we're going to do is find out a little about you and then I'll tell you a little bit about me. We'll look into what is portfolio management and the, then the benefits of portfolio management. And then we'll take a peek into and focus on like where are we today uh, in our current, uh, you know, in our current, the current world we live in today. And then I'm going to provide you some suggestions for portfolio management in the, in our modern times. And and again, if you if you uh, could could keep muted out so that we can get audio good audio for the recording, that would be great. And then item number seven, the last thing, and you might find this interesting. Uh, we've uh, we've taken the current twelve uh, principles from the Pinbox Seventh Edition, and you're going to see how some of these things that we talk about um, in the suggestions for improving por uh, portfolio management actually tie into uh, some of these twelve different uh, principles. So again, number one about you. So let's uh, let me stop sharing here and, and I'm going to send you a, I'm going to uh, send you a survey, uh, a link to a survey uh, that you can you can answer real quick for me. So I'm going to copy this link out. I'm going to chat this to you through the chat window. And I don't think this is a too terribly a, a difficult question, so I'm going to give you about 30 seconds uh, if you could hit that link there and, uh, and and complete that survey for me. Uh, I would appreciate it. Again, I'll give you about 30 seconds and I'll stop rattling in your ear. It's just a couple questions there uh, and it should be interesting to see. I'll share the results with everyone here uh, as, as at the end of our 30 second window. All right, and uh, give me just one more second here. I, I'm still getting a little bit of background noise, so if you could double check your uh, mic button, I'd appreciate that. All right, we've we've reached to the end of the th excuse me, the end of our 30 seconds, and I'm sure you're you're dying to know. Like, okay, out of the 20 people that are out of the 20 some people that are on this call, what, what what's the what's the answer? What's the summary of these answers look like? So, given our more modern tools and our technology that we have here today uh, out of the folks that are on the call. I can see we've got uh, let's let's I wished it would have put it in a histogram format. Uh, we've got nine folks in the project manager role, uh, seven in program manager, uh, 
two in a functional manager role. We got a one one in the other, and then one as a PMO manager. So we got we got some representation pretty much across the board here. That's great. And then let's take a look real quickly at. Oh, guys, you're making me very nervous. I, over half the people here uh, are more than 10 years, so uh, don't. Uh, you're making me nervous now. Uh, don't throw me under the bus or, <laughs> or 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 kick me out. But uh, but again, just just some interesting stats. Um, and I think the information that I'm going to share today, it'll be relevant no matter whether it's your first year in project management or like me, you know getting close to uh, right at 30 years of experience uh, because as I've pulled this stuff together over the last, uh, I don't know, I'd say eight months to a year, I've learned a lot and that's why I'm here. I wanted to share it with you. So that's our, that's, that's my, that's the first one. Um, I'm glad that worked. That technology worked out pretty well. Technology is being our friend today. So let's move on to the next next one, which is I want to tell you a little bit about me. Um, so uh, there, this is me, and I, I know there's a lot of words on this slide. And again, you you look at this list and you're like, oh, this is another one of those certification guys. That's all he does is a paper tiger going and chasing this stuff. Well, no, I've been in the project management space for nearly 30 years. So just over the course of time, you just naturally accumulate these these things as you need to as you need to know this information and you, uh, up your skill sets um, and capabilities so that you can deliver um, uh, in the real world in managing projects programs and um, like I've been doing is uh, transformational uh, engagements but not I'm not going to read all those words but I did highlight a few of them here in green that you that may be relevant you may find relevant for the topic of today and then um, the other one that's really relevant is, believe it or not, uh, a number many years ago when I had a whole lot less gray hair, uh, I was a volunteer uh, for PMI's first, uh, the first edition of the standard por for portfolio management. Yes, this is true. And if you don't believe me, I actually snagged a picture of, of the back of that book where my name is actually in that book. So that's, that's, that's one of my biggest claims to fame, I guess, is I got to contribute to that first edition. So that's, um, you know, and that's relevant for the topic of today. But I want to also say, again, relevant for today is I, I came back. Um, I've been a member of the Huron Valley chapter since 2003, and word has it, and it's really cool to step in to see that we're at 20 years. Word has it, if you guys go back and look at the bylaws and which documentation was signed to start the chapter, I believe it was one of the, or a couple of the individuals from the organization that I work for that signed off. At least that's what I hear. I haven't actually seen it, but that's the tale. But I'm, 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 one of, I'm your child. Uh, I'm, I'm a child of the Huron Valley chapter as I've been a member since 2003, go out into the world deliver, make the project management world better and and come back and occasionally and, and share information. So back in 2012, I delivered this presentation, which was portfolio management and, and how it tied to uh, Microsoft Project Server at that back in 2012. All right, so here's my here's my next question for you. Let me let me send this. Let me send this out. And the question, as you can see, is um, do you hold an agile certification let me let me send this out let me le le leverage the technology here we'll scoop up everybody's answer and then we'll take a look at it together i i know you're dying to know uh so let me let me chat this let me chat this out to you and this is simply one question so i'm giving you 15 or 20 seconds uh to to answer this one so All right, I, I'm at 16 responses. I'm looking for somewhere closer to 20, up to 17, 18. All right, um, if, if you need more, uh, there, there, I'm at 20. So let's uh, let's take a look at our responses here on this question. Um, and let me share my screen so you can all see it together. So we've got, we ended up getting 21 different responses and, uh, um, 
you can see 70, 76% of the people that are on this call hold some type of Agile certification. And I probably should have quantified this before I asked the question because, and hopefully you answered it this way, if you pass the PMP exam on January 3rd, 2021 or later, you could have actually said, yes, I hold an Agile certification because as you well, all well know, about half of the current PMP exam is geared toward, towards Agile. So, um, all right, so w the question is, wh why, Rich, why are you asking this question? Um, uh, there's, uh, you know, half, half, half three quarters of the people on this call right now hold Agile certifications. And Rich, why are you asking this question? So here, here's why I'm asking this question. Let me go back to the slide deck. The reason I'm asking this question is because, notice the headline, um, the, uh, the, uh, no, the, the, I also delivered another presentation. I think that was maybe the date's not right, but anyhow, I also delivered another presentation a few years later. I think it was 2016, to be quite honest, um, about right sizing your PM PM solution to uh, uh, to, to meet your needs. Um, and during this presentation, and there it was in person um, there in Ipsy at the at the. I can't remember the name of the location, but uh, there's probably about 50 people in the room. And and one of the questions I asked at that point in time, again, I think it was 20, 2016, I said, does anyone in here hold an Agile certification? And at that point in time, no one did. And I said, get ready, it's coming. And as, as, we, we, as we look at the stats today, three quarters of the people that are on this call hold some type of Agile certification. So that's take take note of that and I'll, I'll you know I want to it will build off that as we move forward and then back in 2019 I came back again um to to HVC and delivered a presentation around AI is coming AI is coming talking about the digital transformation that is impacting our project management profession right now as we speak and and at that point in time I said um I said it's 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 coming, it's coming, and and I told you at that point in time in 2019 this is coming, just like I said, <laughs> Agile's coming, and then flash forward a little bit farther in March of 2021, PMI Global pushed out this this image, which is the same darn picture that I shared back in 2019, and I thought. Oh my goodness, what's the irony of that? Well, this is a stock photo that was you could freely use, but I just thought it was really ironic. And and the, why am I bringing this up? Because I told you, like it's now here. And uh, and so what what am I leading into? I, like I don't I don't have premonitions or visions or anything, but but I but I work. You know, I've been doing this for a long time, and I cut across multi, many different grains, and and I just see some things that it's like that maybe folks that you know are maybe a little more junior can't see, um, and so and that's why I'm here today saying, hey, portfolio management as we used to know it doesn't exactly fit in our world today, and that's you can see here. Hopefully, you can see this story like. I, <laughs> told you about it and then it materialized but let's see again i'm giving you this stuff as a high level so let's let us now move into that uh area around what is portfolio management especially if you're you're just kind of new into project management this this term may be it may be not exactly in your vocabulary yet so let's get everybody on the same page so the information that's coming uh from here coming to answer these questions here is actually coming from the most current um, uh, edition of the standard for portfolio management. And this is the, the fourth edition, and it was published in 2017. I'll say that again. It was published in 2017, okay? And if you're a PMI member, you can go download this book for free. And I did it. I know that because I did it a few, uh, just a couple months back, and uh, just to make sure I had the most relevant information for us. Um, but again, you could log in with your member uh, ID, and you could download this, and you could have a copy of this standard for portfolio management. So, as we move forward, before we talk more about portfolio management, 
we actually have to answer the question, well, well, what's a portfolio? And again, we're coming straight from that standard, uh, the fourth edition. The, the definition is it's projects, programs, subsidiary portfolios, and operations that are managed as a group to achieve strategic objectives. Strategic objectives. And I like to say, I like to say project management is about doing things right where portfolio management is about doing the right things. And uh, just a slight change in words, but the the, the meaning is, is totally different and at, at a totally different level. And if we were to use a picture to, to align to those words, that picture might look something like this. And again, you can see I'm kind of quoting and referencing uh, uh, the, 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 the portfolio standard here. So in this picture, you can see a sample portfolio that contains, contains multiple programs, another portfolio, and it can also contains individual an individual project. Programs are a collection of related projects, as you can see here. <clears throat> so this would be an example uh, or a, a sample portfolio, just so you can get your head around, like a, I always say a picture's worth a thousand words, a picture of what a portfolio might look like. So now, now the next question. Well, what is portfolio management? Again, pulling the definition straight from the uh, standard for portfolio management, it is the centralized management of one or more portfolios to achieve strategic objectives. So coming straight from the straight from the book. And then another picture to help visualize this process we can see here this is a this is a an example of a portfolio life cycle the example of a portfolio life cycle we know we all know what a project life cycle looks like or and we could have varying project life cycles depending upon the project type that you're undertaking and this is an example but i wanted to slow down here for just a moment and have you you know, kind of skim through um, the the information that's on this because it's it's really good. You know, we've got uh, we've got the different stages here of like initiating a, a portfolio and then doing the planning for a portfolio and and then executing. And you'll notice there's one thing different here. It's so then then in our then in our um, project management world, we, we don't close it out. Like we just keep working to make the portfolio better. We keep working to optimize it. And there is a couple bullet points I want to call your eyes to. The first one here, it says in the planning, it says set yearly goals or objectives. And that's kind of interesting to me um, uh, that, that we're setting those once per year. Um, the other thing is you'll notice here is to uh, uh, calls out a portfolio roadmap. So we for those folks that are um, yeah, that, that flipped up that you are uh, hold an agile certification. This term roadmap should be quite familiar to you. Um, you'll notice it also says that we need to be adapt adaptive and we want to optimize that portfolio. We want to work to optimize that portfolio um, and also re-optimize it at times. Um, and we also in order to optimize that, we, we need to bring in the concept around prioritization. OK, so you can go download some, this entire book. You can you can come find this page in this section and you can read all about the details here. So that's all the deeper that I wanted to go into um, the portfolio lifecycle. But you have access to this if you're a member of PMI. Uh, so what I'd like to talk about now is OK, OK, we we uh, we understand what a you know we understand what a portfolio is we understand what a portfolio management is so now let's talk about well what what are the benefits of portfolio management why would we want to entertain this concept to this this topic and let's just let's just give you a few bullet points here so the first one is we by enabling portfolio management we gain visibility so if you think about that portfolio and let's let's you could have portfolios at different levels in your organization but let's envision we have an enterprise portfolio which is at the highest level of our organization and by having that portfolio that collection of uh, maybe other portfolios programs or projects we gain visibility into what 
all of those are. So that's one. With portfolio management, we are able to, we have tools and techniques in place to help us select the right projects. Remember, project management is about doing things right. Portfolio management is, portfolio management is about doing the right thing. So this portfolio management will allow us to select those right things. And again, tools and processes in place. And here's something else that's quite quite often organizations miss is st stopping projects and that st stopping projects that are there have a you know maybe we're no longer heading in that strategic direction or they're not returning the not uh, no longer pro providing the return that we're looking for or they uh, no longer are providing that true business value uh, any longer because as the project moves forward, you know, it changes and as well as the environment um, the, or the organization is moving forward, the organization changes. And as you all know, we're talking about those enterprise environmental factors here, the, the world around our organization also changes. So at times we need to assess that portfolio to ensure that these projects, there are these items that we're working on are still returning what we plan and we are able to improve that return on investment focus on improving that return on investment and decreasing the risks associated with these initiatives and then finally through by establishing portfolio management this is where we tie the strategy of the organization to those initiatives that we that we undertake so that we're ensuring that we are doing those right things you'll notice a link here i i promise you as soon as we as soon as i'm done here i will send you a link directly to this presentation so you'll be able to access all these supporting links and now we'll move on to talk topic number five and topic number five it says okay let's focus on today where are we at today? It, you know, it's no longer 2017, and the way we, you know, we, we've uh, we've we've experienced the pandemic, and we are experiencing the new ways of working, where it's a lot of it's remote. So our world is different. So I've got a few questions for you here. So let's let's see how this one goes. I'm going to stop sharing, and um, I'm going to send you a link to to another survey here. And if you could hit that link and complete that survey, this one, let's see, there's quite a few of them. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you two, two minutes. I'm going to give you two minutes and two minutes is going to seem like a long time of, of awkward silence, but I'll let you concentrate uh, so that you can review those questions and, and uh, make sure you're getting the answers in there correctly. So we've got 34 people, it looks like, on the call. So I'm looking for a number somewhere close to 30 of these completed uh, or this completed survey here. Right now I'm at 18 uh, and you have about one minute left. I like the third question. Yeah. I got 22 answers. I got 30, 30 closer to 30 is what I'm looking for. All right, you're down to about 15 seconds if you're uh, still trying to get your answers in. Uh, I'd appreciate that. 
and then you'll need to give me a second. I got to do a little talent. I got to do a little tallying on this one. All right, give me just a second here. I've got, uh, let's see, I got 20, 23 answers in. Uh, I got a, I got a, I got a tally, I got to tally this up. Give me, give me just one more second here. Just a couple more seconds here. Bear with me, I'm almost there. Okay, uh, hang on, Ex now Excel's not cooperating with me. Give, me. give me just one more second, if I don't get it, I'll, I'll move on. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, I, get, I got my numbers here. So now let me let me see if I can share them with you again. I know you're I know you're curious. We all we're all geeks about we're all geeks about this number stuff. So let's go straight to the survey first and see see if what we can see from here. So how how many projects are you managing simultaneously? Um, and for this one, this is the one where I had to dump this out to Excel. And I'll now share share this. How many are you managing simultaneously? So uh, we'll, we'll we'll give this the high number here. This the high number here. Um, so on average, we got you know 6.7, and I'm 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 hoping that was a typo there. Uh, somebody managing 20 projects uh, simultaneously. Uh, that that's a that's a lot. Um, and let's uh, let's 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 round out some numbers here and go ahead and answer this question, which is. You know how many hours are you working per week? Which we can see, as 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 I expected, um, way you know a good bit more than 40, and some folks way 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 more than 40. <laughs> and then and then the last question, which you which you um, which you might find interesting, is uh, you know, are are you working more or less hours than you were three years ago? So I'm glad I'm glad that, that the majority here said about about the same, um, but uh, but but not far behind. There's you know as far as a percentage, I guess that's uh, close to 40 percent of people feel they're working way more hours uh, today than they were three years ago and. I I feel like I fall into that bucket too, and almost everybody I encounter on an everyday basis, I I, I hear that, and that's one of the reasons why I asked the question. I'm just trying to get a sense uh, from your perspective, and then let's take a look at this one here. Uh, what percentage of your working time is is spent in meetings? So we got uh, we got about 50 percent. We get we got nine nine people saying about 50 percent. Uh, another nine people saying 75 percent um, that that's good guys that that actually warms my heart because man I've I've been I'm I'm over here I mean I'm I, I if I showed you my calendar it would be like 99 point something uh, and, and and it's every day because we're all you know my the people I work with are still all working remote and it's just wall-to-wall remote meetings to to make any progress so thank you for sharing that i don't know if the information was helpful for you um it was interesting for me and um and maybe some of this will, will tie into uh uh tie into this concept around portfolio management because in modern times so let's uh let's 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 move uh let's move uh a little bit farther forward here so we answered that question, and uh, and so moving on to the next slide, it says, I say I say here, given 
given that the standard for portfolio management, the most current edition was published in 2017, given that just our HVC members, um, I guess maybe that was back in 2012 where I duplicated the mistake. <laughs> I don't have to go fact check that. Somebody fact check me on that one. Um, but but again, whenever I delivered this, it was it was there was no one that held an agile certification. And today, there's 75% of the people on this call that hold, hold an agile certification. So given that, and then the number of projects that you're you're managing in parallel, and those for those folks that are on the right side of that, um, you know, working the those working those lots of hours per week. Um, given given all of these things, this is like a geometry problem. Given these, here, here's what I say. Uh, I say we we need a more modern approach to to this portfolio management. And now let let me ask you a couple more questions. So let me uh, stop sharing here for just a second. And I will ask you a couple more questions here. And I think this is our final survey. Um, yep. Let me chat this out to you. All right. And this, this again, this is this. There's only two questions here, and they're pretty simple. So I will I'll give you 30 seconds, 30 seconds to answer those simple yes, no, yes, no type questions. Up to 10 responses, 12. Thank you so much. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Come on, we're we're trying to we're trying to get close to thirty. All right, your thirty seconds is up. If you're still trying to click on yes or no, please please hurry with that, <laughs> because I'm going to share my screen uh, again. We got up to uh, let's see how many responses we got up to. We got up to 24. 24 different people uh, were able to get your responses in here. And uh, so the first one is: uh, Does your organization have a portfolio management process? So, uh, so th three, 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 three folks say yes. That's about 13%. Um, wait, I'm pointing at the wrong thing. Three, three folks said, "Hey, I'm not really sure." And and really. It's OK, and <laughs> that's why I put that. That's why I put that answer in there, because I've actually in young my younger days and depend and also where I was sitting in the organization. I didn't know I had no idea, uh, and that's why I say well, gave you gave you that option because it's 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 possible that you just don't haven't don't have that line of sight. So, uh, you know, 13% uh, not sure we got. Uh, we got 38% that do have a portfolio management process and then 50% that, that do not. So maybe based upon some of the things you're seeing today, maybe this simply having a portfolio management process in place um, can help your organization out by ensuring that you're working on the right projects and also ensuring they're being opt optimized uh, based upon their uh, the value that they bring to the organization and also sequenced so that we aren't over allocating our people or over allocating our budget uh, for funding these projects. All right, let's take a take a look at the uh, the next question. Does your organization have a, a portfolio management office? Uh, uh, nine people say yes. Oh, great. So you guys will you guys are going to be in here telling me everything I, 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 I've said wrong <laughs> here at the end. No, I hope not. Uh, but uh, but but um, 63 percent say no. So some interesting stats there. And now let me go back. Let me go back to the story. So continuing on continuing on the story. Let's give you some suggestions now for por portfolio management in our, in our modern times. So number one. One number one suggestion is to implement a portfolio office, and the value of a portfolio office, as you can see here, you got access or uh, to insights on on that portfolio, uh, the performance of the portfolio that you got improved visibility, 
you're able to make more effective decisions and increase the uh, understanding of the alignment of projects to the strategic objectives and just having you know that that portfolio office and some roles in place to govern that process um, provides great value to the organization as a whole. If you want to read more details uh, on the portfolio office, I'm again giving you a link here. You can go deep dive on those details. Implement a, a lean, listen to this, implement a lean portfolio management, or excuse me, implement lean portfolio management. And so here's the definition. Rich, what do you mean by lean portfolio management? So this lean portfolio management, it aligns that strategy and execution by applying that lean concept and systems thinking to, to to our strategy and and our investment funding and also uh, brings a, brings in agile portfolio operations and government go governance so this is lean portfolio management and and here's an example of of you know kind of moving away from the traditional approach or or what we used to do maybe uh back in 20 you know, just pr prior to the pandemic, pr prior to uh, prior to getting ingested with so much of the agile principles, processes, and techniques, and you'll see here on the left, this is this is how we used to take the traditional approach at project management, and this lean agile approach says we want to organize around value streams and fund those value streams and va establish value streams budget and. Um, and 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 use a lean business case. I've worked with some organizations that you. It's basically a project itself to pull together the business case uh, for some of the initiatives. And so again, traditional. This is a lean agile approach. And and then the next one we say here is to apply the some of our agile techniques that we've learned. And, and what are what are these agile techniques that we can apply at the portfolio level? One. Fund our value streams, not projects. Fund value streams and not projects. So now you may say, well, what's what's a value stream? Well, straight definition of a value stream, it's that series of steps that an organization uses to implement some type of solution, the, the solution or the, the, that we're building. And it, it provides this are a continuous flow to the customer. That's the definition of a value stream. And what you need to do here is you need to think product management rather than project management where we have a product or a solution and we're we're releasing that product and we're continually uh, improving that product or adding additional features or function functionality or capability to that product or solution and that that value stream a value stream would look like this where we're where we're doing our define build test release and repeat and repeat and repeat and we're constantly making that you know that that product or that solution more valuable not only to our customers but that this is bringing value back into our organization so there's a link there to article on that you should assess and prioritize the portfolio more frequently than once per year and maybe even more frequently than once per quarter and by maybe it is once per month you're continually looking at that that portfolio uh, running the statistics uh, performing the assessment uh, understanding the value that each uh, each 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 um, item is bringing back to the organization and there's another tool in our agile toolbox here it's something called weighted shortest job first and it's a prioritization approach when when it comes to pr the prioritizing projects you could use we learned about net present value and internal rate or a rate of return when we possibly talk about bring you know starting a new project we uh, we also uh, in the portfolio management space on a traditional we could we 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 establish business drivers um, we could use you know dot boating or Moscow or this weighted shortest job first and what I would recommend is this weighted shortest job first because it, it provides a quick yet quantifiable way to prioritize things it's uh, it's based uh, again a model that's uh, that uses a sequ sequencing of jobs um, it allows for updating priorities and provides our uh, our best um, the best uh, approach for the right economic outcome again focusing on theory rather than uh, 
or excuse me, focusing on job sequencing rather than theory. And it's based on, upon something called cost of delay, um, or I should say it's estimated by something called cost of delay divided by job size, which is the normalized cost. And I know I'm getting down in now. WSJF, weighted shortest job first. Uh, Rich, you're kind of talking a little bit Greek. Um, if you want to go find out more information on this WSJF, you could you could click on that link and you could find out more. Here's the formula. Uh, it's kind of re rewritten a couple of times here. We got our weighted shortest job first, which is that cost of delay divided by a normalized cost. Here's how you get to the cost of delay. It's using this formula and if we were to build a little simple little tool in Excel that allows us to put in our items and we basically play our uh, 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 planning poker <laughs> with the executives to uh, to establish the uh, the size of each one of these items which automatically calculates our cost of delay we input the estimated cost for each one of those items we then normalize that cost and this little calculator here in Excel again it's pretty quick to get to this answer um, and and it's quantifiable and uh, you've got metrics here that you can now use to help you make decisions on which project has the highest priority and that's the one that we should uh, focus on first is the one that has the highest weight as shortest job first so leverage work or um, WSJF and limit work in progress limit work in progress you can hear that that's another agile technique and how do we do that one we do that by job sequencing using the prioritization score in wsjf but this is more to you as an individual um, learn to say no or at least not right now kind of like the moscow right prioritization learn to say no or at least not right now and and here's why, because when you take on too much work, it causes burnout and it increases what we call context switching. Another concept that we learned about through our agile, like when you shift back and forth from one thing to another, your brain has to reprocess. And uh, and, and that's that, that's a, that's another bad thing. Uh, it also reduces flow, right? When you try to do too much, what happens? Nothing gets done. So you must you must strive to limit work in progress and hopefully you know bring some of those instead of 80 hours a week maybe we're able to, to politely say no and, and get that back somewhere near to to 40. so here's some tips on how to handle this because it's a very hard thing to do uh, um, when you get asked to do more uh, than what you really should be given your bandwidth you need to handle this as a discussion talk to the people or that's asking you to do more and frame it this way, right? Go back to that whole concept around portfolio management. Frame it in a way where you say, hey, I want to make sure I'm focusing my time and energy and attention on the most strategic priorities. There's a link to an article there where you could research more. So now that now that now we've talked ticked off our, our three suggestions, let's move over to aligning these uh, aligning some of these things to the 12 project management principles from PMI coming from the seventh edition as you can see there and let's start off with focusing on value because that's what all of our projects are all about if we go back we could say fund those value streams you can see a tie there there's a uh, 11 and 12 says embrace adaptability and resiliency and enable change to achieve the envisioned future state well that's where you assess and prioritize your uh, portfolio more frequently. And then finally, we've got effectively engaged with stakeholders and optimize the risk responses. That, that's tied. I can tie that directly to that weighted shortest job first. And so with that, that brings me to the end of my presentation for today. You've, uh, if you want to reach out to me through LinkedIn, I'm Rich Weller. And at this point in time, I'll do the best I can to answer any questions that you all might have.